In Star Citizen, for years there's been a widely settled notion by the community that piracy doesn't exist in the game's current build. Missing mechanics. No mention by the developers. Misunderstanding of the game's direction and many other reasons have contributed to their belief of this notion. Until now at least. We in Mongo Squad are among the few that had begun the campaign for piracy development in Star Citizen many years ago. When all you could really do is capture someone's ship in Arena Commander. From then, all the way to now. The game in its current state has allowed us and other pirate groups to flourish. As a result of our efforts and message, in the last eight months, we've noticed many more players have been racing the black, posting content, starting their own orgs, and shattering that very notion. We are overjoyed to see how far this gameplay has come, and the strides the community has taken to bring it this far. In an effort to take it even further in development, and to breed more players that are keen in going on the account, we feel a duty to share the skills, experience, and knowledge that we've gained over the years with you. So that you can start doing piracy right. And thus, welcome to the Mongrel Piracy Academy. Contrary to popular belief, there is no pirate ship in Star Citizen. There are ships that pirates use, but they use them because they possess the characteristics that make piracy against our targets possible. We're not going to sit here to tell you to use this ship with these components because Star Citizen is still in development. Things will change and what we recommend may not fit how you want to do piracy. We believe you are better off learning the characteristics to look for in a ship or vehicle to use for piracy so you're able to roll with the changes as they're made and make your own decisions on how to kit yourself out. Things like interdiction capability, radar, stealth, firepower, and other utilities should always be in your thought process when choosing the right ships. Part of what you need to do in order to pirate a target is to prevent it from getting away. This may mean you need to interdict your target to stop them as they're traveling, so that you can gain control of their movement. EMP and QED mentioned in the previous episodes are best for this, however, what you also need to understand when interdicting a target is that they will try to escape your attempt at stopping them. They may be able to pull off some maneuvers that could cause your QED ship to overheat or your EMP to miss, and there are also components out there that can give your targets an edge on recovering quickly from being disabled. While the Vanguard Sentinel has the most powerful EMP out of all of them currently in the game, it is not the best for doing piracy due to the long cooldown and charge-up time that it has. We consider the Avenger Warlock as the superior choice for EMP as it has excellent balance between EMP capability, maneuverability, and firepower. The Saber Raven is an excellent EMP ship as well, however, due to the limitations on obtaining them and their lack of firepower, they still sit behind the Warlock. The Anvil Hawk lacks the ability to lock down larger ships using EMP for extended periods of time and shouldn't be considered for hitting any of the larger cargo hauling ships. For QED, you only have two options and both vehicles perform well, however, the Cutlass Blue edges out the RSI Mantis as the QED ship to use currently, due to its superior firepower, durability, its quantum drive that can be upgraded so you can move fast around the system, its ability to take a small amount of cargo, and its ability to carry a small amount of troops for your boarding team. The Mantis has its place for its snaring capability, but as we'll discuss in a later episode when we look into piracy tactics, it's seldom used. Finding targets to pirate requires a lot of time and effort. Currently, radar components are bespoke to their ships and follow a very rudimentary size scale that delegates how far you're able to detect targets passively through your active ping. The Org Legacy Fleet has a tutorial on their YouTube channel about stealth and mainly focuses on how radar works in Star Citizen and at the time of this video's release, it's still current and valid information. So instead of regurgitating what someone else has already said, check out the card in the top right hand corner for a link to their videos. There will also be links in this video's description. When choosing a ship for its radar capability, bigger is always better, but as we'll talk about in the next part of this video, you're going to have to balance the pros of having a radar that can detect targets further away against the cons of using a ship with higher emission signatures. If you haven't watched those stealth tutorials from Legacy Fleet, you really should. They'll help with some of the characteristics we're going to talk about here when it comes to choosing a ship for stealth. Assuming you have watched them, 
then when setting your ship up for stealth, you need to reduce your ship's emissions while you're out on the hunt for targets. Your shields are a huge contributor to your EM signature, and whilst it would make sense to use the stealth shields, you can simply use more powerful shields and just turn them off until you need them. You're trying to be sneaky, so your situational awareness and management of your ship's signatures are your first line of defense. Your enemy won't attack you if they don't know that you're there. Your IR signature is a lot more important due to how easy it is to reduce your EM, and while having high-end coolers on your ship could make your ship's IR signature less, every ship has what's called a pipe system built into it that dictates how efficient coolant flows around your ship, thus also influencing your ship's IR. Don't bother using the Suppress IR feature because it's only a placebo. It only updates the IR signatures for your ship while everyone else sees you at your previous IR rate and you cause more issues to your ship's components as power is limited to them to achieve a lower IR value. We recommend that you use the Urkel Games Calculator to assist with gauging how stealthy your ship can be with the loadouts that you choose. Your IR signature will reduce over time, however, something that you need to understand is that whenever you encounter a ship for the first time, the IR value that they see you at is your starting IR, not the current value you see on your MFD. This is not intended, and due to the current development of Star Citizen will be addressed sometime between the time this video goes out and the heat death of the universe as we know it. When it comes to firepower, bigger and badder is always better in this regard. There are always meta weapons to use during dogfighting combat, but for piracy it's slightly different as we want to separate the target from their money or valuables more than we want to kill them. Direct distortion weapons are highly recommended with the distortion repeaters being favored by pirates because they allow you to maintain a constant stream of distortion damage going down range, shredding your target shields in quick order for you to drop an EMP on it. Pirates will generally use energy weapons to prevent overpenetration of the target shields that ballistics are capable of doing. Though, for your fighters, we do recommend using ballistics for some of that extra shield penetration on your target. While we can understand the use of gimbaled weapons to help learn how to fight in ships in Star Citizen, we highly recommend moving to fixed weapons as soon as you feel comfortable to do so, so that you can gain a bit of extra firepower that mounting fixed weapons can afford you. And with missiles, unless your intent is to engage in scooping only, you'll generally use them against other fighters and not waste them on cargo hauling or transport ships. The utility of a ship is a bonus feature if you want to think of it that way. Simply put, piracy for profit means you're going to want your equipment to be able to do as many different tasks as possible in the one ship. You aren't going to get every desirable capability for piracy in a single ship, but when you're working in a team, you can synergize your group's composition to use ships and vehicles that complement each other well. The Cutlass Blue is a very good example of this. It is the primary quantum interdiction within your pirate crew, but it can also carry the boarding team and a small amount of cargo as well, and it's a formidable fighter in the hands of a competent pilot. There are many more features that have been spoken about that will come out in the future and will be added to the toolbox you use for piracy. For now, what we have enables us to be able to achieve piracy at a base level of being able to interdict, disable, board, and seize a target ship. As more mechanics come online, you're going to have to stay on top of what those changes entail and adjust your equipment, ships, and composition to be able to continue doing piracy ops. It'll sometimes be confusing. You'll have to do some testing, network, and exchange data with other pirate crews. It'll be hard to to adapt when these changes are made, but as long as you remain flexible, every step you take learning how to do piracy now helps you adapt more easily in the future. Piracy is not easy to do, and it takes a team effort, with everyone working hard together to achieve a successful outcome. The reality is that you're going to have failures. You're not going to be making hundreds of thousands of credits on every single hit. You're going to get called names, and you have to accept that people don't like what we do. But if you're serious about becoming a pirate in Star Citizen, then you have to remember, pirates take what they want, and they don't wait for permission. It's not perfect, but if you have a team and the drive to push you through multiple failures, which you will have, then you can make piracy work for you. I'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time.